I'm Dr. Lauren Bruver. This week I'm going to be talking about how to write your AMCAS work and activity sketch. We're going to go step by step through that and then I'm going to debunk some common myths associated with writing your AMCAS work and activity sketch. So for those of you who aren't quite sure what the AMCAS work and activity sketch is, it's essentially a way for medical schools to assess your non-cognitive skills. It's a place where you write down your research experience, your work experience, your extracurricular activities, your volunteer experience, your leadership experiences, all those things that you do outside of school that have helped you develop the skills that you need that will one day make you a fabulous physician. Step one, start early. I cannot emphasize this one enough. There's two components to this. First of all, you need to start volunteering early. So you can submit activities from as early as summer of senior year. This means you need to start thinking about volunteering as soon as you're getting into your undergraduate program. So choose those activities, start volunteering, start some research projects, and start building the skills that you need to get into medical school. Second of all, it takes a long time to write all the descriptors, follow all the guidelines, and stay within character limits. You really want to have high quality descriptors, and that requires a lot of proofreading. You don't want your sketch to reflect poor attention to detail or an inability to follow instructions, which could result in you being rejected from medical school. So take the time, start early, get someone else to proofread your sketch for you. Second, you need to choose your activities. So here with our students, we really emphasize quality over quantity. A lot of the sketches I see, they put in activities to fill out the 15 slots and didn't really think about what skills they learned or what the importance of those activities were. You want to be almost surgical with your decision to include or not include an activity. If they are not, you know, showing dedication, progression, or a huge impact on yourself or someone else, and they don't show you learning those non-cognitive skills, then they shouldn't be included. So be really precise and go with quality over quantity in terms of your activities. Third, you want to make titles for your activities. So the title is less important than the description and it shouldn't take you long to do. There's basically two things you want to include. First of all, your role, so volunteer or whatever you were, and second of all, the name of the organization. So you might say volunteer, uh, you know, true eco corporation. That's your title. Fourth, you want to actually write the descriptions. So like I said, the descriptions are 750 characters. That includes spaces. So that's about four to five sentences for most people. There's four or five main things that you want to include in each description. So first of all, the mission of the organization. What is the organization all about? Second, what your role in the organization was. So what did you do? What was your exact role within the organization? Third, you want to talk about the impact you had on other people. So how did you change the, pe the lives of the people you were working with? Fourth, you want to talk about the impact of the role on yourself. What did you learn from this experience? Finally, you can choose to give a value statement or a statement of importance about the experience. So this is something that's more generalizable about why you chose to do this volunteer experience in the first place. This may or may not apply to every descriptor in your sketch. It can help to give medical schools insight into that kind of intrinsic motivation that you possess. So once you've written those descriptors, the next thing you want to do is proofread. And proofread and proofread again. The most helpful thing you can do is to have someone else proofread them for you, make sure they make sense, catch those little spelling and grammatical errors, and it can be especially helpful to have professional help with this. You want someone who has experience with AMCAS sketches, who knows what admissions committees are looking for, and who's going to make sure that you're within those character count limits and that your sketch is absolutely perfect. Finally, you want to be taking a look at those three most important experiences. So I've included a blog post that goes into more detail in terms of how to actually write out those experiences. You can check that out over on the side. But you want to be thinking about experiences that have really influenced your decision to pursue medicine or that really show the development of those non-cognitive skills within yourself. So between those, new, those two criteria, you can choose three experiences and you want them to be varied and show that you are a well-rounded individual. Next, I'm going to go through some common myths associated with the AMCAS sketch. So the first myth is that hobbies should not be included. So it is okay to include hobbies. You want to be able to show the admissions committee that you are a well-rounded person, that you have a life outside of school, and also that you have ways of mitigating stress and kind of dealing with that when times get hard. 
So again, with your hobbies, you want to choose hobbies that show dedication, progression, and development of those non-cognitive skills. So maybe you like to run, and you know, in your first year of university, you ran a marathon, you didn't even finish, but three years later, you qualified for Boston and you know, ran sub three hours. Like that shows a lot of dedication, a lot of commitment, a lot of progression, and you definitely learn something important about yourself along the way. So include those hobbies, just make sure again you're being judicious about choosing them. The next myth is that everything on your sketch has to be medical. So this is absolutely not true. Though it's important to show that you have done shadowing, that you have those clinical experiences, that you've explored the career, not everything on your sketch needs to be medical. There's a lot of other ways to build those non-cognitive skills. Maybe you're super into theater and through that you learn communication skills, leadership skills, how to resolve conflicts. There's a lot of different ways that you can build skills and become a better person. They don't all have to be within the hospital or within research or something medicine related. Finally, it's the biggest myth and the biggest mistake I see with these sketches is just filling in every box and having a lot of activities. This gets into what I said before about quality over quantity. So it's more important that you demonstrate, you know, dedication, progression, and that you learn skills through your activities than that you, sh you know, fill in all the boxes. All right, so that's my video for this week. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for even more great videos. If you're looking for more specific tips to help you with your AMCAS work and activity sketch, you can check out the blog post I linked below, or you can sign up for your free initial consultation with BMO today. We give professional feedback on AMCAS sketches. See you all next week.